Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show. I'm your host, Sherrard. Hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. I know I am, and I'm very, very excited for our guests we have on the show this evening. But before we get started, the Sherrard Show is brought to you by Essence Television, ladies and gentlemen. Just watch your monitor. Essence Television is the home of the Sherrard Show, where we have fashionable entertainment television, the best episodes of your life. From Smokey Robinson to Stevie Wonder to the Manhattans. We also even have DJ Private Ryan. And then also this episode will be featured uh, with Mr. Michael Wiley, the television host. You don't want to miss it. And then the Sherrod Show is also brought to you by iHeartRadio. If you ever miss an episode of the Sherrod Show on television, you can always listen to it on iHeartRadio. Just add it to your Roku or add it to your smartphone or device, and you'll be able to also listen to the best episodes of your life, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I'm so excited because I've known our, my guests for many, many years. Yes, <laughs> John, we go back from humble beginnings yes. to both having television shows, talking about various things. I'm so excited. But this gentleman um, is located in Chicago, and he uses his voice to heal the nation. And it's awesome to see what he does and the topics he talks about on his show, Man Up. You can see it on your monitor, ladies and gentlemen, Man Up. Like, I love that logo. Um, he's really looking like an old pimp. In that yeah, logo. Man, I, I, I had to uh, flex on the people tonight, man. You know, I would <laughs> so, so we appreciate having my good friend and fellow talk show host, Mr. Michael Wiley. Welcome yes, to the sir. Sherrard Show, sir. How are you? Man, I'm doing fantastic. And might I say, uh, I'm a little, you know, I'm a little floored that you have me on the show, man. You've been doing the show for so long and you just never invited me. I'm not, th I'm not throwing it out there. I'm just saying I've never been invited to the show, but no, I'm, 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 I'm excited, man. I'm, I'm glad to be here and you know, you've been doing your thing for a while. So um, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome to finally, to finally grace the presence of the Sherrard show. I appreciate you so much, Mike, being yes, on sir. the show. It's so excited. And believe you me, his schedule is so busy. Um, it's not necessarily all about me. Mike is doing big things in the community as well. Uh, Mike, now let's talk about your inspiration for Men Up, first of all. What is your inspiration behind becoming a television show host um, and podcast connoisseur? You know, I, I think most of my inspiration came from just... Um, just a childhood dream in a sense. You know, I always, growing up in Chicago, for those of y'all that live in Chicago or lived in Chicago, you know, back in the, you know, back in the day before the internet really took over, you only had really two mediums, right? You had television and radio. And radio was my first love, if you, if, if I really, if I really want to be honest. Um, you know, I, I came up listening to the the um the Doug Banks and the um Tom you know Tom Joiners the um you know Pink House for those that remember WKKC on Friday evenings uh -oh. Uh -oh. yeah man y'all ain't heard you know Pink House man had the house music going on on Fridays and and the Devonte Stones and Crazy Howard McGee's and I used to think that those dudes and what they did were so awesome and like the that job just to be able, you you get to listen to, to great music all day. You get to talk to, to celebrity guests. And then you get to just talk to regular everyday people, right? It's like, man, how cool is that? It's a, it was just an awesome, it was just an awesome format. And so as time went on, you know, now you fast forward to where technology has allowed us um, to have so many formats and so many platforms that we can use and that's free to us, right? You know, and I was just like, I want to do something like that. So that was part of it. And then also just noticing that a lot of the shows that was on TV, you know, and no offense, lady, were very um, female centric. You know, they all had kind of female opinions and female themes. And I'm just like, man, this is like no shows on for for the brothers or nothing, you know, other than like just the regular news that guys would watch. But it was nothing that really kind of had that um that that barbershop vibe to it you know what i'm saying and you and you know how it is you go to the shop y'all talk about any and everything you may fuss you may fight you may argue but when it's all said and done you know you leave with a with a you know hopefully with a new perspective on some things and if not at least you had lively conversation right so that was the inspiration of it i wanted to do something that that i wanted to do a show that that gave uh, a man's perspective and had that that barbershop theme, but still at the same time talked about things that was pertinent to 
the African American community, you know, just the things were that were important to us, and um, and just to provoke meaningful conversation, and not just conversation that people just like, yeah, yeah, you know, no. I mean, I really want to promote conversation that got people to think, and even if it didn't change your mind, you know, maybe it just had you to see things just a little bit differently, you know, see the bigger picture, and not just have that that kind of, of tunnel vision that sometimes we, we tend to have. So those were kind of my inspirations for me to, to start doing what I was doing. You know, Mike, you're very humble and uh, modest in what you're doing um, and what you're saying, but Mike's television show and his uh, podcast is quite impressive because he often talks about things that men can't really talk to their wives about, or they're just too shameful to even talk to and let out. But you have a magical way of getting it out of people. For example, when you speak about how men cry, you know, in the dark and how it's okay to be able to uh, cry and um, yes, be able to share the things that men um, really, the society tell you, you can't do, but you've learned how to be able to notice it and to get it out of people. What's your secret, Mike? I, I you know what, man, I think just being genuine, you know, um, I, I've never, I, I've never tried to come off more than what, I've never tried to come off to be more than what I, than what I am, which is, I'm just, like anybody else, right? And the one thing um, I, I take my cue from 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 my from my um, religious beliefs, right? Now I'm a Christian male. Um, I know it's not a Christian podcast, but I've never shied away from my beliefs. And the one thing that Speaking. you learn, and the one thing that you learn in your walk is that we overcome by our testimonies, right? And what that basically means is that if I hear somebody has gone through the same thing or has experienced the same thing that I have. And, and I see that they came out of that thing and they came out better or they came out somehow okay, then that can hopefully inspire me to know that whatever it is that I'm going through that I can come out of this thing or I can be better on the other side. So I just use that same theory when we talk about the subjects that we talk about, a lot of times people just need to hear that somebody else is going through the same thing that they're going through, or that someone else has experienced the same thing that they experienced, or they may feel the same way that they feel and not be alienated. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, as a black male, certain things are taboo in our community. You know, like crying, oh my God, you bet not cry. If you was a, a, a guy coming up, then man, <laughs> you bet not share the tip. Men don't cry. You ain't look what you're crying for. But you know, Mike, that's, the thing that's interesting is where does that go? When you have that, you want to cry, you know, it goes, stays inside of you and it festers. And then all of a sudden you get a man that kills his whole family. God forbid, something really crazy like that. I, absolutely. But, absolutely. Um, and then also, Mike, uh, one of the topics I remember you speaking about was, um, you know, black males growing up without their fathers and, you know, mm -hmm. what it was like not having a father. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not an insult to women. It's just a fact that a woman can't make a boy into a man. Right. That's what uh, uh, fathers are there for. Um, and you mentioned about when I remember your dad very well, actually, um, yes, back in the 90s, I remember meeting him. And you were speaking about how, you know, he never got a chance to meet your sons. And, he never got a chance to certain things. You just feel like a big hole because, you know, you want to share certain things and he's not there. Um, yeah. When I was looking at your comments, you got a lot of people responding off of that. Tell us a little bit about how emotional that particular topic was that night. You know what, man, it's, it's, it wasn't as emotional as it normally is because it's something that I'm, I'm learning more to deal with. And one of the things that I talked about was that I, I, I'm learning that I never grieved properly for my father, right? And he's been going now for almost 24 years. Um, and he died actually, I want to say a couple of weeks before Father's Day. And that was really hard for me to accept because you got to understand that as a young man, when you're coming up and you're learning yourself and you're trying to figure out who you are, you know, you often clash with your father because he has ideas and you have your own ideas. So there's always this clash there, right? But then as I got a little older and I started to more understand what he, the things that he was telling me, because I was learning some of those things myself just from experience, I started to respect him more. And then I think he started to respect me more because he saw that I was becoming my own person. 
And so from not liking him and from not wanting to be around him to now we're growing closer and we're laughing and we're joking to all of a sudden him being taken away was a hard thing to deal with, especially when you go through life and you have these accomplishments and you have these milestones such as your first child and you get married and, and, and they graduate and birthdays and all of these things. And you have loved ones that you share that with, but it's like, it's like even, even that for him not to be able to be here to, to experience those things, it kind of sucks. You, you know what I mean? And, and dude, it was a time, there are times, there are times when like, I, I would just like, just all of a sudden it would just hit me. And I'm like just in the room crying because it's just like, man, dude, you are not here to see how great your grandkids turned out to be and how awesome they are and how funny they are, how powerful they are. You Mike, know, they're just like you. Mike I, has two sons that are um, just as sarcastic and cynical as he is. Yeah, they are. <laughs> you can't deny that. And they look yeah, just man. like him. But it's so much to be proud about in terms of his children. Now, Mike, um, it's, it, 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 again, this evening we're talking to uh, the television show host, Mr. Michael Wiley. Uh, yes, sir. He is the voice of Chicago, I like to say. He has his own uh, podcast, Man Up. You can see the shirt he's wearing. It's really cool, to the, the jersey, Man yeah. Up Real Talk. We will talk about where he can purchase it. You can purchase it as well. Um, it's a really <laughs> neat website he has where you can be able to purchase these items. Again, the Sherrod Show is brought to you by iHeartRadio as well as Essence television. And then we will be taking your questions in a moment um, for this gentleman and scholar. We do see the questions and comments popping up, but we'll be able to take those awesome, questions awesome. and comments in a moment. Now, Mike, um, when you came and started doing your podcast in Chicago, I know it's mm -hmm. taking you somewhere where you probably didn't even think it was going to go because now it's really expanding into something really huge and you do have your uh, great co-host as well. But my question to you, Mike, is... Um, with Chicago hurting so bad, do you feel that what you're doing is really healing the nation? You know, it's hard to say, right? Um, you would love to think that everybody that listens to you understands what you're saying and they agree with it and they're just like, oh my God, he's he makes sense and let's go all and be great together, right? But that's that's not the truth. You know, and, and, and truthfully, there's a lot of people that's not listening because they don't care. Um, I can't worry about them, right? The only thing that I can do is concentrate on the people that incline their ears to what I'm saying. And even in that, it's no guarantee that any of them may even see things differently. But if I come away and if one person, one person says, man, you know what? I didn't think of that that way maybe I should try this, or maybe I should do that, or maybe I should think, you know, look at this differently, then I've done my job. And hopefully that one person will then go and maybe talk to someone and change that mind, that person's mind, and then that person will go and change that person's mind and so forth and so on. So even if it's just, even if I just touch one, you know, the, the prayer is, is that they will pay it forward and that they will, you know, and that they'll spread the good news. And, and who knows, man, you know, it may be more people, maybe more, maybe more people are affected more than I think they are. But if I can just change that one mind, then I believe that, 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 that the difference can be made. Now, Mike, let me ask you a question um, in terms of uh, the difference in generations. Now, when you were back dating um, back in the 90s, OK, mm -hmm. um, there was a, 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 a trend, a norm of what to expect of how you looked at it back in the 90s. Yes, sir. But now when you look at the young people in the dating game uh, now in the 2020s and back in the 2010s, um, what do you how, what's your perspective on it? For example, when your sons are out there dating now, is it very different from back when you were dating? Absolutely. I mean, you look, you you already know we know how it was back then, man. You know, back then you had to work. You have to work to get a girl. It was like it wasn't now it's like you just swipe left or swipe right. You know, it's a, it's a whole different thing nowadays. But back then, if it was somebody you you wanted to talk to, you had to work. You had to do the flowers and the dinners. And, you know, we used to make remember we used to make mixtapes back in the day. 
you know, you put all the songs that you liked on there and all the songs that, you know, that relate, the message that you want to get to it. You made mixtapes. And so you have to put work in. And now it's just like, they don't do that. You know, and it and it's almost as if like relationships really aren't a thing. It's kind of like we're together. Yeah, it's cool. And even if we're not together, yeah, that's cool, too. You know, so the, the dating scene now is 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 so much different than it was when we was coming up man i i i don't i i don't even know how they navigate it i'm just gonna be honest with you like i got two sons and i'm just be like man look good luck i can give you a little, <laughs> i give you a little advice but uh i don't know this landscape i ain't familiar with it i'm sorry that's the, that's the very thing i was going to ask you mike what do you what kind of advice can you give your sons when they say well i swipe right <laughs> but I got left or whatever that they may they may say to you. What right. kind of fatherly advice do you give them? You know what, man? Just to be, I think the the the, the important thing, and I don't care what generation it is, it's just to be honest. You know, so so many relationships fail because it's, it's just no honesty established in the beginning, right? And and if you can just establish honesty in the beginning, just be truthful to to be truthful to your to significant other you know, set your boundaries, let them know where you're coming from, understand where they're coming from. And as long as you all have an understanding and you're communicating and, and, and if you have that and that honesty has been established, you should be okay. You know, but most times nowadays, because we live in the world that we live in, you know, you look, even the online profiles ain't even truthful. You get some, how, how did Chris Tucker say, you get a girl and you used to look at her profile. She looked like Janet Jackson and then she pull up and then next thing you know, she looked like Freddie Jackson. So <laughs> you, you got to be careful, man. You got to be careful. But, but honesty is going to be the key in anything that you do. So basically you have to keep the foundation of got truth it. and honesty. And if they man, act look. up from there, you just know you you did the right thing. Exactly. You know, some, some of those some of those foundational things, you know, although they're they're old or traditional, they still work. You know what I mean? And and th- like honesty, man, that still works. So, you know, just just keep it honest, man. If you keep it honest, I think you'll be all right. You know, Mike, many audience members feel that uh, Man Up um, podcast is a safe haven where many people can vent how they feel. Mm-hmm. about things um where a lot of platforms they cannot is that the, is that was that your goal and intention when you um started man up absolutely no judgment zone mm-hmm. right like i we we did an episode actually called um uh, uh we, we talked about um getting your black card revoked and because it's some there are some tropes among black people that, that people tend to think that black people have a monolithic way of thinking right that we all think the same thing and so I did that show specifically so people can say things that were um, unpopular opinions among Blacks, such as, I don't think Denzel is a great actor, mm-hmm. you know, or I don't think he's the greatest actor. I don't think he's as great as people proclaim him to be. Now, you say that most people probably like, pr- most people probably leave you alone. You know, I can't play spades. I don't know how to play dominoes. Uh, exactly. I don't know how to play dominoes. I've never seen Scarface. I'm just saying it's these things that we <laughs> gave people space to say, hey, this is I'm just being honest. And so it was no judgment. We didn't judge you. But, it, but you know, we gave people that space to say it. And But even even when we don't do shows like that, we want to make sure that we that we keep a no judgment zone, because the one thing you don't want a person to feel like is that they can't be honest. Because if they can't be honest, then what's the purpose of having real conversation, right? And that's, that's what, and that's what we're promoting. So if I'm going to promote real conversation, then I have to promote honesty and I have to be able to promote you to be honest with yourself. And so, you know, yeah, no judgment. That's, the, that's, that's one of the key elements of the show. Believe it or not, Mike, there are some Black people, including myself, that don't listen to rap. There are some Black people that have never seen Purple Rain. It's some Black people that don't eat greens. I'm just oh, saying that, it's <laughs> it is oh, that, that. <laughs> you know that there, there are some that don't you know in terms of that um it, so but again ladies and gentlemen just talking to the wonderful Mr. Michael Wiley uh, from Man Up we will be taking your questions in one moment so we'd love to uh hear from you as well as um how you feel about his wonderful um podcast and where do you feel uh where do you see it going i see it going to the moon and beyond because um he has the style he has the uh the, he has the look and but he also has the topics that
that people would like to hear. Now, Mike, um, coming from Chicago, being born and raised um, mm -hmm. in Chicago, um, and you see all the things that are currently going on, the rash of carjackings, the shootings, um, yes, the things that really make, um, Chicago, it takes away the, how wonderful of a city it is. Man. What kind of advice, if someone said they're moving to Chicago and they're so excited, what kind of advice would you give them um, when they're navigating in this brand new city? Man, enjoy your stay. You know, it's, I, I hate when people bring up Chicago. It's like, oh my God, you're going to Chicago? And I'm like, and I'm born and raised in Chicago. Look, look, people talk about how violent Chicago is. Chicago ain't even cracked the top 10 of violent cities on the top 10 list. I think, I think Chicago is like in the hundreds or something like that. You know, it, it's, it's stuff that if you're not from the city, you don't understand because you only hear, you only know what they, what they tell you on TV. And the way politicians try to paint Chicago on how they try to use it in the political game, you would think that we, we coming out the house with full tack gear on trying to go to the store to buy donuts. And it's not true. You know, I, I, I go where I normally go. I enjoy, I enjoy when I go out, but I also know that there are certain pockets in the city that you don't go to. That's any city, any city that you live in. There are just some areas that even you don't, you'd be like, mm, I ain't going over there. Cause mm -hmm. them dudes be tripping over there. I ain't going because I know, you know, so if you're moving to Chicago, if you had, if you had a notion to move to Chicago, God bless you. It's a wonderful city with a lot to offer. You know, don't let the media fool you into thinking that it's a war zone because it's not our, is there some things going on in the city? Absolutely. Are there some things that need to be fixed? Absolutely. That's every city, you know, but don't let, don't let people fool you into thinking that Chicago is this war torn, bombed out and depleted place because it's not. <laughs> we gotta we gotta walk around like this right yeah. hey hey I'm, i just need new ports i just need new ports it's like no nah, man <laughs> absolutely <laughs> well said well said you know mike when you think about um times though mm -hmm. um you know when you were growing up whether you're conscious of it or not but as you got older you started to realize this there were certain movies certain um films certain cartoons certain tv shows that you really can uh, it really was very personal to you in mm -hmm. your childhood. Like the first time you saw Good Times, oh. the first time you saw Sanford and Son, or the first time you heard Curtis Mayfield. You know, there's always certain things that are coolly high, you know, certain yeah. things that you think, wow, I, I, I remember where I was when I first saw this. Yeah, yeah. But when you look at um, um, radio and podcast people, you were mentioning it early as well. Mm -hmm. um, for my mom and dad, as well as my generation as well, um, the voice of Herb Kent, God rest his soul. Herb uh, Kent. Did, it did so much for people yes. when he did the Battle of the Best. Or just yes. knowing he came in on Sundays and he came on on Saturday afternoons um, was just a welcoming thing. Um, for me, and I don't see if you share this sentiment, mm -hmm. I feel that man up has a capacity to be like that where it can touch people's lives when they say, I remember where I was when Mike was talking about such and such, such and such. Do you feel that when you think of uh, where Man Up is going? I, you know what? That's something that I aspire to. And, and I would, I, I, our endeavor is to be, is to have that legacy, right? I, I was, it's funny you mentioned that because I was just talking to uh, my nephew earlier today. And he was telling me that um, someone that he knew had a podcast and that he was watching it. And he was just like, my uncle podcast is better than this. And, then, and I was like, what? He said, Uncle Michael, he was like, man, I was watching a show. And he was like, your stuff is so, he said, I was proud. He said, I'm proud to know that you have a podcast and how and knowing how dope it is man he was like because i can watch your show and you talk about interesting things and and you funny and you have this and you say this and he was like and i was watching theirs and i was just bored yeah. dude that made me feel good because first of all i didn't even know he watched it number one and then secondly for him to to recognize the 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 work and the work ethic and and the time that we put into it to try to at least put for the best content that we can dude. that did wonders for me. That's beautiful. You know? And so, and, and so, yeah, the, the plan is to, is to leave that legacy. So when people, even when people log off, you know, man, that was, that was some good conversation or, you know, now it's something that they can take back to work or they can take back to school or just take back to, to the wife or whoever and say, man, you know what? I, I was listening to this and they were talking about this. What do you think? 
you know, so that's, that's, that's the goal, man. Excellent. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take your questions. Um, now we've got a few questions we're going to um, take for Mr. Michael Wiley about his, uh, his talk show, as well as uh, the things that he has going on. All right. So we have our quite first question. This is from Danny, Danny M and Danny M from Lafayette, Indiana. He says, you have a great man up uh, podcast. I love how you and the gentlemen banter together and talk about deep topics. Is there any topics that you won't talk about? Very good mm, question. No, mm -hmm. I don't think it's anything that we won't talk about. Um, I, I, I think you have to be open to all conversation, you know, and how you handle that conversation is the important part. I don't think anything is off topic. It's just how you handle the topic, right? Because someone was asking me to do an episode about um, homosexuality among youth. And I don't mind doing it, but I want to make sure that if I do it, I'm, I'm not doing it to bash and I'm not doing it to embarrass or to condemn or anything like that. I want to do it to promote conversation to get a better understanding you, you know what i mean so so yeah I, but but no no topic is, is 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 um is off the table very good we appreciate your question danny m from lafayette indiana this question here is from celine she's from sun valley california out here she said michael you're doing a wonderful job um i just have sometimes have a trouble catching your podcast when exactly what's the times or days that it airs yeah, you know, we pri we're primarily on Tuesdays at six o'clock p.m. Um, that's Central Time. Um, those we go live every Tuesday at six o'clock Central Time. We try to do Thursday shows from time to time because our our Tuesday shows are more interview type, um, are, are more um, interview oriented. Um, for the most part, and and then on Thursdays that's when we kind of do like our random conversations, but. Tuesdays is our primary show. So if you ever want to catch us, catch us on, um, you can follow our Facebook page at Man Up Real Talk Podcast. And you can um, like and follow that page. And Tuesdays at six o'clock is when you can catch the show. Okay, very good. You can see that on your monitor, ladies and gentlemen. Very good information. I will take our last question. This is from Karen Hud. Karen Hud. She uh oh, is from Karen. <laughs> She's from <laughs> Fort Lauderdale, Florida. She said she loves your show and the fact that you aren't sexist or racist. You just tell the truth and the facts. Her question to you is, <laughs> how did you and Sherrard meet? <laughs> well, I guess I'll let you tell a story. Oh, man. Long ago in the galaxy far, far away, <laughs> there was this big box retail store called Montgomery Wards. Uh oh, look at your monitor, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, there was a store called Montgomery Wards, and uh, me and Sherrard met in the, we worked in the housewares department <laughs> in Montgomery Wards in the Ford City Shopping Mall, mm -hmm. and uh, we had some really, really good years, some fun years working there. I mean, dude, you know what's funny? I credit a lot of the things that I learned just worth ethic-wise. I credit a lot of that to Montgomery Ward because I learned a lot working at Montgomery Wards, man. Mm -hmm. I miss Wards from time to time, but that's where we met. Amen, amen, amen. She also asked, did you know Carvel? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to even talk about him. <laughs> joking. Thank you, Ken, for your question. Oh, uh, so Lord. much. Um, Mike, can you please tell the wonderful audience? And first of all, I want to thank you all so much for your questions as well. <laughs> we wish you could take you more, take more from you. But Mike, where can um, the audience members reach out to you for other questions and comments about your show? Oh, uh, man, they can absolutely friend us and like us on Facebook, on our Facebook page at Man Up Real Talk, at the Man Up Real Talk podcast page. Um, we're also, um, you can also follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. Um, Twitter is at Man Up Real Talk. And then in Instagram is, I think it's Man Up. On, it's Man Up Real Talk. Just Google us. I promise you, if you Google us, we will be the first thing to pop up. But you can follow us on most of your social media formats. Um, you can actually catch all of our um, all of our audio podcasts on any of your favorite podcast applications. We're on Stitcher, we're on TuneIn, iHeartRadio, Podbean, um, iTunes, Google Play. We're just we're everywhere. So just Google us, and you will be able to find us. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Now, Mike, um, 
I really didn't want to bring this up, but I guess I will have to. Um, mm -hmm. Mike used to own a skating ring. <laughs> um, he, he did a little. It's a little story behind it, Mike. So, can you tell us a little bit about what happened with the skating ring? First of all, this is one of the things. See, I knew he was going to bring this up. <laughs> I already knew it. Look, we, we used to have this thing at wars. Where we would practice being shysty salesmen. Don't know why, but it was just something that we did. And so we was always, so we were like, we used to have this little silverware that would be sitting on the counter and we would open it up and close it real quick. We're like, I promise you it's all there, but it was missing pieces. Um, just goofy things like the blender didn't have a blade, but we would sell it. Just, I mean, we didn't actually sell the stuff, but we were practicing selling things that we knew no normal person would buy. Mm. And so one of the things that we were selling was a skating rink. Now, the skating rink, um, it was horrible. It, it, it had gravel instead of like hardwood floors. Um, half the ceiling was coming in. Um, the speakers only worked on Tuesdays. It was something really goofy about it. And so I ended up selling it to somebody and they wanted a refund because they didn't like the place. And so I gave them this weird time frame, like you have to meet me between, you have to meet me on Thursdays on the corner of 63rd and Eggleston between two, um, between two o'clock and two o five. Now, if I'm not there, <laughs> just know you missed your opportunity. It was just Oh my God. But man, we used to have laughs doing that, man. I mean, you talk about funny. It was good hey. stuff. Excellent, excellent, Mike. We want to thank you so much for stopping by the Sherrard Show. Uh, yes, sir. You know, you're so loved by so many, um, and you're such a dear friend. He's doing such wonderful things. Um, when he comes out to L.A., we will have him in the studio. Yeah, man, I got to come side. out. I got to come out to L.A., man. That's that's my plan. As, as well, Mike. And then also make sure you watch him again on Tuesday and Thursdays uh, yes, for Man Up. Again, is that 6 p.m. your time? Tuesday, 6 p.m. Central. Yes, sir. Very good. And for all of you all, um, tomorrow we have a very special uh, time frame as well as episode of the Sherrard Show. From In Living Color, Mr. Tommy Davidson will be on the Sherrard Show. Um, awesome. That's going to be at 12 o'clock Pacific time. You don't want to miss it. Please pray for me. I hope I can get through the interview without falling out laughing. Man, and then right? Also, and then also we have coming soon to the Sherrard Show, Mr. Robert De Niro as well. So you don't oh, want to wow. miss that. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, subscribe uh, to the, our YouTube channel as well as add the Essence television app yes. to your Roku. In the meantime, for Michael and for all his fans in the Sherrard Show, we see you tomorrow. Bye-bye now. Peace. Good hair grease. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Sherrod Show. If you like additional information about our episodes, you can log on to thesherrodshow.com. You can also check us out on social media, like us on Facebook, look at our YouTube videos, subscribe to our newsletter at essencetelevisionnetworks at gmail.com. If you would like to get information to the host, Sherrod, you can email him at thesherrodshow.com. Once again, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week.